Yes, it's on. All right, hop on. Hello, everyone. It's Lawrence here, and I'm here with Eric. And Eric is how old? How old are you, Eric? Five. He's five years old, and he's a beginner. So we're going to show you how we teach our beginner students. So are you excited, Eric? I can't hear you. Are you excited? Yeah. Tell the audience. Are you excited? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's get straight into it. So first of all, our five finger exercise. So we do this to build our muscles on our fingers. Do you want to show me your right hand? Yeah. Right hand. Yep. Yeah. Give me a straight back when you do it. Feet flat on the floor. And let's do finger one first. Oh, so only finger one. Now bum bum bum. Show me. Good job. Let's try finger two. Good job. Let's try finger three. Good. Now I'm going to come up and see everything curved. Good job. So we push the joints of our children's fingers to make sure it doesn't bend. If it bends like this, let's try the, the video. If it bends like this, it's bad. Do this, Eric, do thumbs down, bad. But if we poke it and it doesn't bend, it's good. Give them a thumbs up. So let's try five fingers on and I'm gonna poke him, see if it bends. Pretty good, pretty good. So when they're five, you wanna do it gently, not too hard. Otherwise they might get upset. <laughs> All right, and let's do finger four, three times. Finger four, one, two, three. Good job. And finger five, three times. Good job. Okay, and let's move on to your left hand. And then push down. And we'll find out if Eric is curved. Poke. Good. Poke. Good. Poke. Oh, oh, oh. Splat. Splat. <laughs> All right, good. He almost became a spaghetti. And finger five. All right, good job. Give me a big high five. <laughs> All right. So moving on. So that was pretty good, Eric. I'm going to give you one more week of that and aim to pass. Yeah? If it's yeah. super good next week, that's it. We don't need to do it anymore. So if good, pass and move on to scales. And that's where the technique really begins. Now, next we use flashcards. So I'm going to test Eric on his flashcards. If you haven't already, get your Muso Music flashcards. And we use this 10 minutes a day. So the parents will buy one for themselves. The teachers will have one as well. And they will practice with their child. If you're not sure how to practice, very simple. We've got instructions inside as well. So are you ready, Eric? Yeah. Should I get a weapon? Yes, I should. <laughs> Show the audience how we make it fun. Do you know who this is? Do you like it or not? You can say you like it. Oh, you like it. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, just because I know some kids may not like it. Okay, so this is Olaf. Yeah, you know Olaf? And if you make a mistake, Olaf might tickle you. Now, I recommend you make sure you know the child first before you do this, because some students may not like it. But luckily, Eric likes it. Do you like it, Eric? You do? <laughs> okay, he likes being poked on the tummy. All right, so ready. Where should I put Olaf? Okay, let's put him here. He's watching you. He's watching you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready. How many seconds should we give him? Hmm, five, four, three? What do you think, Eric? Can you get it in three seconds? Oh, he's confident, okay. So ready, three, two, one. He made a mistake. Olaf would tickle him. <laughs> but he actually got it right in the end. So it's an A. A, good. So the rule is you can't just play it. You have to say the letter as well. And why is this so effective is because if I point at the score and say start from here, he would know where to go. How about this note, treble clef. Three, two, F. That was quick, Eric. Three, two, D. Good job. Three, two, good job. Three, two, one. 
Very good. Now notice that Eric switched from his right hand to his left hand because it was on the bass clef. So very important we teach our kids treble and bass. Even though he's five years old, he can do it. Now I'm going to give you a hard one. Can he do it? Three, two, one. Can I fix it? Yes, hey, give me a high five. So I gave him a very hard note. Look how low that is. Super low, right? And of course, if you don't know it, you can look at the back. There's instructions on how to find it. Pretty impressive, Eric. Let's give him more hard ones. Three, two, one. Try again. You played the right note, but you said C. Are you sure? E. Okay, good job. Now, a really high one. Three, two. Good job. G. How about this one? Three, two, one. Good. And three, two, one. All right, good. So Olaf only pecked him once. Here, give him a little pat. Great. So if you do well, you're going to give him a little pat. And let me test you real quick. So I want to see if you know your rhythms. So first one. So it's either crotchet, minim, or quaver. And crotchet minimum, I'm gonna ask you how many beats are there. So ready? What is this one? Minimum. Minimum, good job. And how many beats are there? Two. Two beats. Let's say it loudly for me. How many beats? Two beats. Good. How about this one? Uh, not cockroach. <laughs> He's a cockroach. <laughs> That's how I teach the students. It's not cockroach. It's a <laughs> not cockroach. Do you want to be a cockroach? No, you don't, right? So it's a cro cro. Oh, he keeps saying cockroach. All right, crotchet. Say it for me. Crotchet. And how many beats are there? One. One beat. Okay. And what about this note? He's looking at his dad. He thinks the dad has the answers. So, <laughs> are you, do you think pulling the shirt will, will get the answer out? <laughs> the poo -poo -poo is a quaver. Say it for me. Quaver. All right, so a bit hard for a five-year-old, but try to get it over time, okay? And how many quavers are there in a crotchet? There are? Yeah, there are two. Okay, let's get straight into your pieces. So, let's start with the Bastion book. And we're up to this piece, am I right? No, we're not. We're up to here. So, let's start. Wind chimes. When you're ready. So what I really liked about it, Eric, is you count it out loud. So for those who don't know, we make all our students count out loud, which is something a lot of teachers don't do. And that's actually why a lot of students don't make it very high. They don't hit grade eight because the rhythm, they just can't handle it. So the little mistake he had was he didn't realize that the repeated Ds is also D flat. So the rule in piano is if you see a flat, you must keep playing flats when you see the same note. Does it make sense? Until you see a line. This is a wall. Yep, so if you're in between the wall, you have to keep playing that flat. So watch my fingers, do this for me. D flat, and then D flat again. Do you wanna give it a try for me? Only right hand. So exactly what I did just then, Eric. Two, and then one more time. Three, four. 
Okay, let's go from the very top and we'll see if Eric can fix all those D flats. Remember to curve. Like a what animal? What animal is this? Tiger, yes. He likes to whisper, tiger. Okay, let's go from the top. If you can fix it once, straight away, we're gonna pass it, okay? Ready? Three, four. Slow down, breathe, and watch the flat. One, two, three, four. One, two, curve. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Fix it. Very good, and he lifted exactly on four. All right, we can pass this one. What's your favorite color, Eric? Pink, purple, blue. It's blue. Okay, I'll give him a blue sticker. All the boys like blue so much. I can see I'm almost out of blue. All right, let's move the camera a bit. So we're gonna see more of your face now. Because everyone knows you're cute, so we'll let them see more of your face. Give them a wave. <laughs> Alright, moving on. Let's do waltzing elephants. When you're ready. So let's work on this one. He actually played really well, except at the end he forgot the tie. Do you know what a tie is, Eric? He does. So what does it mean? Do I play the second note of the tie? No, we don't. So just show me real quick from here. Play the C, and then right hand, and go. Two, three, one, two, one, three. Good. Okay, let's work on something called phrasing. Now, a lot of teachers watching will probably be shocked. How are you teaching a five-year-old phrasing already? Well, it's possible. So we just teach our kids that a phrase is something called a sentence, yeah? Do you know what a sentence is? Really? Okay, say, hi, my name is Eric. Hi, my name is Eric. Yes, but without touching your nose. Eh? Hi, my name is Eric. <laughs> <laughs> hi, my name is Eric, say it. Good. Now say to the audience, I love ice cream. Look at them. I like ice cream. Great. So would it make sense if I said, I like ice cream? Not really, right? That's a bit weird. My name is Eric. <laughs> that will be weird, right? So that's actually what phrasing is about. Can you finish the sentence? Does it make sense? Okay, so watch the way I play. So the ending. What I do, I added a little decrescendo. I went a bit softer because my name is Eric. Not my name is Eric. <laughs> that wouldn't make sense. So I want you to play louder here. And when you drop down, lean in. I will help you, okay? So I like to push my students in just to help them out. Let's try from here. All right, confidence. Big sound, go. One, two, one, two, three. Louder, one, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, he played the tight note. Okay, punishment time. Put your hands in the air. Yes, this is how I punish my students. Okay, let's try again from here. Let's try a bit faster though. Da -di -da. Go. One, two, three, one, two. Now this time, challenge. Can you go even softer? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Difficult. Can you 
do it. One. Louder. Two, three, one. There we go. And that's how we start off our beginners with phrasing. I'll give you... I can't give you more blue. I'm sorry, Eric. <gasps> Actually, no. I got blue and purple. Is that okay? Blue and purple, yes. All right. If I give you pink, you won't cry, right? You won't go home and cry. I can't believe Lawrence did this to me. He gave me a pink sticker. All right, one more. Did you manage to do the challenge piece? You did? Okay. So let's show the audience the happy seal. When you're ready. So you actually played it fine, but you didn't know how to count. So he was actually saying one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But if you look at the score, let's show the audience. It's actually a bunch of quavers. I'm not sure if they, I'm not sure if they can see it. So in Muzo, we say one and two n when we're counting, not one, two, three, four. That's why you look confused. So it's, I'll do it with you. Watch me. One and two n. So let's do it together. Go. One. Let's go. By the way, you might see me continuously poking him while he plays. It's not that I have nothing better to do. <laughs> I'm doing it to make sure he curves. That's right, Eric. So every time he's caught bending, I keep pecking him. That's why a lot of people who watch our students, they, they're really shocked. How are they so young and so curved, playing fast at age seven? It's because when they're beginner, we keep pecking them until the fingers become super strong. And one day, they can play super fast. Was that funny? Super strong, super fast. <laughs> like Captain America. I say that because he likes Captain America. Don't you, Eric? You do. Okay, good. Give you a red one. No pink. And moving on. So I'll give you three new pieces because you did so well. And the audience would love to see you come back with three pieces done. And we'll do Rain Rain. This one's going to be fun. Staccatos. There's so many games we can do with that. We can play a note, tap our head. And this one, <coughs> one, two, three, four. So mom, just make sure you remember, do each piece every day. So let's say you finish the technique stuff, the, the five finger exercise, and then it's time to practice. You just do this one first, up to here, count out loud. Right hand, left hand, both hands. Then you do this one, first line, and this one. So it should be pretty easy. Just one line at a time. If you're doing more than that, you might find you'll struggle because it's too much for a five-year-old. And then each day, just do the next one. Yep. All right, hop up for me. So this is the funny part. We get our five-year-olds to hop up and watch us play. And we'll see if he can focus while I play for him. Do you think he can do it, Eric? All right. Sometimes it's quite funny. The kids will jump around, but I think Eric should be okay. So this one is about legato, which is joining the notes and you have to play musical. So last time I was telling Eric how to pull and push. So usually I make him the teacher and he's gonna pull my arm as I'm playing. So pull and push. Make sure you don't play the second tied note, Eric. 
but we have to hold it all across. Lots of ties in this one. So ready, hold my arm with both hands. Yes, he knows. He remembers from last time. So I will say push, push, and then pull. So ready, long push. One, two, three. Long push. One, two, three. Now pull. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Then push. One, two, three. Gentle. Push. Two, three. And then big pull. One, pull. Three, four. One, two, three. Now this part is interesting. You don't do anything, but you pull on this one. So one, two, three, four. Pull. One. Oh, oh you're trying to push. Pull. One, two. No, nothing. One, two, three, four. Pull. One, two, three. Now push. One, two, three. Push. One, two, three. And then pull. One, two, three. And then push. One, two, three, four. And I lift it exactly on, on, on four. So because I know today Eric had some troubles with his ties, I'm going to be looking out for them next week to see if he can improve on that. You'll notice I played some black keys. Oh, <laughs> he was trying to stretch and he accidentally hit the piano. So, do you notice I played some black keys? It's because the key signature is saying B flat. So every time I see B, I've got to play what, Eric? B flat. So I'll be like a Hulk next week. I got my telescope ready and I'll be looking at those Bs. You must play B flat. If you don't play B flat, I will go. What sound does a hawk make? I'll just say, I'll go, I'll go, B flats, B flats, every time you make a mistake. All right, moving on, rain, rain. Now, you see these dots, do you know what they mean? They mean to play staccato. Say for me, staccato. Say it loudly, because they can't hear you. Staccato. Louder. Staccato. All right. Not sticky rising. <laughs> Staccato. And that means to play short. So how do you play it? Just imagine the piano keys are really hot. So then you'll come off short. Give me your finger. Ready, watch this. Ready? See that? Try it. Try yourself. Yeah. So it's an up motion. A lot of students go down, right? They can do this. That's why it's not short. If you want to go short, you've got to go up. Try it. Yeah, it's got that snap. So watch me. One, two, three, four. 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 How cool is that, Eric? So I can't wait to see if you can do it. So what you need to look out for, Eric, are these notes. These are long. So it's a dotted minimum here. Hold it while playing the right hand short. And you come off on beat number four. Look, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And this one, easy. Just make the right hand sing. And count one, two, three, one, two, three. Good thing is all of these pieces are in F major. So they're all B flat. Key signatures. So watch out for those B flats. Any question from this book, Eric? No. You're so confident. Of course you are, because mummy will practice with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hop on for me. Now the next book for you to show off is Thompson's Part Two. Let's do the sunrise. Good job. 
but of course you didn't know is one and two and yeah so no one two three four so one and two and three and four and let's fix it real quick so we can pass this one ready okay, he needs to do some stretches okay if you do it well i'll let you stretch if you don't do it well you can't stretch he's smiling <laughs> he wants to stretch so ready from the top go one two So we got one hand, and when the other hand plays, you gotta lift the other hand. So do this in the air for me. One and two. Do that in the air. Do on your head. Do this. Ready? And do it in the air. Yeah, you're like a, a superhero. All right. Now let's play it on the piano and go. One. way too low so your note was wrong yeah so use finger four here and then go three and four. oh we're phrasing so drop the end let's try again i love ice cream and ice cream. very good good this one can pass all right you can do a quick stretch make it look cool yes cool stretch yes you can do one in the air if you want Yes. Okay, now action. So it counts aloud. Ready? Two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so this is a B flat. So the key signature is B flat. So every time you see B, you gotta play B flat. Let's have a go. Go. One, uh, A here. Go. Go. notes on the right hand go and there's nothing here go three one two three one finger four one two three oh b flat two three one two three one and one two three So work on this one, and I want you to add on this piece. One, two, three, one, two, three. Make sure your ties are good. The three blind mice. Try challenges of two lines on the first day. If you can do it, that's impressive. And then do one more, dancing kangaroo. This one's fun, and only one hand, lucky you. So you only need to play this line because I'm going to play this line. Cool, any questions for today, Eric? No? Okay, look at the audience and give them a big wave. Yay! <laughs>